For the love that you gave and the care that you lent I want you to know it was time well spent It's made me so much better and I know that it's true I wouldn't be me if it wasn't for you If not for you I'd have never danced in the rain Found love or tried to tame the whispering winds of the edge wood of your care I have lived and I have dared to be the kind of man that you'd be proud of oh it's true I wouldn't be me if it wasn't for you And I know at times that I have let you down Wouldn't see the wrong I done, couldn't listen anyhow Well, your love for me is tried and it's true I wouldn't be me if it wasn't for you Welcome back to the all-new Dallas Music Network. I'm your host, Emmeline, and I'm so excited to have you with us today because we're debuting the brand new series here at Dallas Music Network called Poppy's Place. In fact, we brought you all the way into the woods of Dallas, Texas to check out Pappy's Place itself. Come on in to see music being made. From the very first step you take into Pappy's studio, you're surrounded by this magical sense of home. He's got gold records and autographed photos of recording stars like Bonnie Raitt tucked in between homemade quilts and twinkle lights. He's got all these knickknacks, and every knickknack has a memory attached. In fact, I got the chance to speak to Pappy himself about some of those memories in the Dallas Music Network studio in 2021. Mr. Paul Pappy Middleton, how are you doing, friend? Well, I smell like I just did my laundry, <laughs> but that's okay. That's, that's always, that's a, that's a good feeling, though. I was going to say, you know that you're safe, which is important in oh. this day and age. Well, I'm an, I'm an old geezer, and these things really help. <laughs> who needs a face lift now? I, I was going to say. Yeah, but, now uh, now everything has to speak through art, right? Because you can't yeah. see anybody's facial expression? Well, I'm, right now I'm still feeling really blessed, uh, <laughs> like Mav, to be alive because uh, yeah. my next birthday I'll be 75 years wow. old. And I've been in this industry for 54 years now. And... Uh, it took breaking an ankle while I was on a tryout scholarship in college. Wow. Uh, and I broke my ankle right before I was, the season started, so I didn't get my scholarship. And hmm. I hobbled down to a coffee shop in Austin that night and played three songs and made $3.25. And I ate for a week on 19 cent hamburgers. Wow. And I'm still in the music industry. <laughs> I said, I can do this. Well, my song, Talking to the Walls, that I got to play with all the amazing artists. Um, you know, I actually started writing that in the middle of 2020, which was when, you know, COVID was like taking over the world. I feel like it's still kind of that point, but it was really extreme that year. And I was actually living in LA before. Um, and then, you know, COVID happened in like end of February of that year. So I packed my stuff up and I moved back to Texas and at first I was like you know what's going on I loved LA I was thriving out there and now I have to come back home but it was kind of a blessing in disguise because over that whole time I was in my house I was able to get back into music because it was kind of on hold for a little bit with acting and dance and stuff out there um, but my song talking to the walls was, you know, I was in my room with my guitar and it was hard to communicate with people because I feel like everything was kind of shut down. It was weird and um, kind of like against the rules to even come in contact with anyone. So that was kind of the meaning behind that song. You know, at that moment in time, I just felt like the only thing that I could talk to and the only thing that I could really understand and the only thing that was listening was the walls. So that's like yeah. the metaphor 
for the whole kind of purpose of that song. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you wanna give me a beat? Tim Ramsey, he comes from a family full of wonderful musicians. His older brother, Matt Ramsey, and I were in a band called uh, Cleon Edwards and Hungry Jacks. And we put together an album, and that's how I met the Ramseys, um, through that situation. But Tim is Matt's little brother, and Tim only been playing for, what, maybe three, four years now? So, and to be that amazing is because it's just like that he lives it every day. He sees Matt practicing all these years since 12. Matt's been an amazing bass player since 12 years old. He's been featured on a lot of uh, shows and podcasts all over since he was 12 years old. And his little brother just like picked it up. And then within four years, he's almost just as good as him. And it was just crazy. Like he's a phenom. And what makes him like unique he plays a right-handed bass upside down 
So, you know, normally people play a bass like that. He uses the same bass and plays it upside down. Now, that's how he learned. So, he played up for a while, and then he got a, 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 left, a couple of left-hand basses, which we've seen on the show. But, yeah, I picked him because I wanted to, you know, have somebody new. It's, it's great for somebody like Tim to be able to work with somebody like Bobby and people that have all this experience and he's only been playing for four years. So it's like exposing him to something that he might not have gotten to do, but you know, that's what we do here at Dallas Music Network. We make certain connections and relationships that don't normally happen. So that's why I picked Tim to play bass for us. Yeah. When I started building Palmyra Studios, that's my mm -hmm. studio, uh, I had just turned 50. Mm -hmm. So it's been there almost 25 years now. That's incredible. And my daughter drove up from Austin and said, Pop, what are you doing now? <laughs> and uh, I said, honey, I'm just finishing my dream. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were moving my console in. Mm -hmm. And again, very blessed that while working with Bonnie Raitt, when I put the word out that I was looking for an old Neve console, which are built in London, uh -huh. uh, by old Rupert Neve, who lives down outside Austin right now. Really? Yeah, he moved here many years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got a 1969 Neve console that came out of Abbey Road Studios in London. And it was only because I was out front with working with these kind of people mm -hmm. that when I put the word out, these guys wanted to get it to me. Hey, that's Bonnie's engineer. And so I've been able to buy the kind of gear that I love to use. Uh, my studio has all the digital stuff in it. I don't use it much. Uh, mm -hmm. All of my projects are on tape. Pappy Middleton. Man, that name alone is like, a legendary you know because we've our artists from different genres have recorded at this studio and palmyra studios is a big staple in the dallas fort worth area and it's actually 45 minutes outside of it um erica badu recorded orange moon there he's worked with many many artists in the country arena um he's um and he's just a great guy he built the studio with his on two hands, he was like, it was the smartest idea and investment ever. He bought a, he got some land, got a house, built, and out of that house, he built the whole house out as a studio. Like, gutted it out and just made it the whole thing a studio. And on this rural, beautiful land that's really secluded, like, you get lost going if you go by yourself. <laughs> and it's your first time. You need to go with somebody that knows where they're going. But, it's 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 magical. Please, I need that guy. Four. Eight. Talking to the walls is here. Oh. So that's got to feel good as a songwriter to be able to connect with people. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think all we really want as musicians is to make something important that lasts. Yeah. And to tell the truth of the human experience in a way that resonates with people. Yeah. Because I think when we're kids, right, there's this myth that all of these adults are wandering around with their lives all figured out. And so yeah. we're like, when I get to be 18, I'm going to have it all figured out, right? I'll be an adult and then I'll be yeah. smart. And then I won't have to worry about anything. And then you get to the 18 and you realize that nobody knows what they're doing. Yeah, well, I think you have figured it out. A lot of things. <laughs> so I wrote Superheroes what feels like a while ago now, um, I was in sort of a transition period in my life. And I, I came to music in sort of a weird fashion, right? Like a lot of people are born into a musical family or they're born into you know, a family where people are super supportive of the arts. I was born into a family of accountants. Um, I was actually a mathlete in high school. Oh, um, wow. Which, for those of you who don't know what a mathlete is, it's your one-way ticket to popularity in high school. Uh, it means you do competitive math. And I think my parents were a little shocked and dismayed when they realized they had raised a musician instead of an accountant. Um, but I, <laughs> they were like, where did we go wrong? Um, <laughs> she was going to be so successful and now she's going to live in a box. Um, but I think 
I, I was really determined. I loved music. I mean, as you know, people who are watching this episode can see, is true for everybody who works on this show. Like all these incredible players, mm -hmm. all the people behind the scenes. I, you know, it sings through my bones. It's in my veins. It's like fire in my body. I love music, and so I would take my little keyboard and I go to open mics and I go to gigs and I met people slowly but surely with whom I was able to connect through music. And I will never forget the first time somebody came up to me and told me my song meant something to them. And that's sort of how Superheroes was born, was thinking about that community and about the little ways in which we don't really realize we're changing each other's lives. But we are. Um, and you know that's sort of where the bridge comes from, when the crowd's gone away and no one's shouting out your name. Um, you'll see the lines in every face you've helped to change. And I think we're all creating ripple effects, whether we realize it or not. And so I hope people who listen to the song feel empowered to you know, go forth and be their truest selves in the world, because you never know who you're affecting by doing that. Thank you. I just want to. <laughs> Girlfriend, I that's where it Face, that's where it came from. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh. of dust among the stars we've got ourselves a hotel room down at rock bottom but i think we dilate in the dark see weeds are known for their resilience and rocks are built to scale down here Shining like diamonds Too high to fall Too bright to feel
I think everybody here knows and feels what uh, I've felt all my life is that being in the arts in almost any form, uh, everybody has a certain art form that really touches them. And yeah. if, they're, if they really love it and it pulls the creative side out of their, out of their heart, you can do it. Yeah. You can make a living at it. You can find a way. I love Peppy's Place. I love like recording there. I've recorded there with a bunch of different artists. <laughs> you know, it's so rural, it's so serene, it's so it's like peaceful, and you kind of mm -hmm. like can create easy. Like, I think that made a lot of y'all comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just to be able to be like, okay, I don't know what my song is gonna sound like, right. but I kind of don't care because there's a cat over there. That's cool. There's <laughs> Oh my God, there's so much grass out here. Mm -hmm. uh, He's got wind, wind chimes on the back porch. Wind chimes. <laughs> we out in the field. Just open yeah. doors yeah. and mm -hmm. good country air. You yeah. say that though, it's like, it's idyllic. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it's sure. idyllic and beautiful mm -hmm. and peaceful and there are couches yes. and rugs and it's very chill and inspiring and mm. then it's also incredibly intimidating. Because you walk in mm. and you're like, wow, this is such cozy furniture. What a great place. Mm. Oh my God, that's Bonnie Raitt on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my God, that's a signed picture of Bonnie Raitt wow. on the wall. Mm -hmm. He produced Bonnie Raitt. Mm -hmm. And you know, and then you realize that you, you know, you see all these other people you notice. Mm -hmm. You're like, Badu. oh, I am in, yeah. 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 I'll Which is not, no big deal for Lala. Orange <laughs> for the rest Orange of us, we're like, Erica Badu. Yeah. see yeah. that happening there. Yeah. Totally. Yes. Yeah, that I remember sense. Pappy was mm -hmm. saying that um, I was talking to him a little bit and he said like the whole inspiration of the place was based off his grandparents' house because oh. he loved going to his grandparents' house. And I got the same vibe um, going there and I think that's why I was kind of so comfortable. Like mm -hmm. my grandparents actually, they used to have a bowl of walnuts that they kept like with the walnut cracker and I hadn't seen that since I had visited. And he had it. He had it. <laughs> Amazing. I love this. <laughs> it was awesome. I picked Camden Lee to play guitar for the simple fact that same thing, you know, young guy, hadn't been really on the scene that long, but he's a great, great, great player. Like he's, it's his level of play equaled everybody in the room e easily. And this kid just got, he just got out of Booker T not too long ago. He's two years out of Booker T. So he's a 20 year, 19, 20 year old guy. He was the youngest person in the room, but he was by far not, he, he didn't get left behind on the music at all. That's why I was like, hey, you take all the solos. <laughs> you and Bobby can take all the solos. I don't really want a solo. Ended up taking one anyway. But, you know, Camden Lee, and he plays with, um, he's currently working with Medicine Man Revival on a new album, so you know. He's getting his f ground, you know, he's making ground really, really, really well right now to be so young. And then that connection with this Dallas Music Network jam session at Pappy's, now he's about to play with Bobby Sparks on Bobby's new record. So, again, another relationship made, Dallas Music Network. So, um, you know, <laughs> interestingly enough, there is an actual for real, for real backstory to the love story. Mm -hmm. The title in, itself, in and of itself is actually ironic because the song actually is more of a testimony to how broken hearted I was in the moment. Um, and it was um, a, a situation of like, it was a, band, a, a ripping the bandaid off kind of situation. I was actually in a, um, in a band rehearsal years ago. That's how old the song is. <laughs> 
that I wrote it. Um, I was in a band, in a band rehearsal and um, a relationship that I had been in that while I was in it was the, literally the best experience I'd ever had um, regarding you know being involved with another person romantically and you know considering doing life together um, and when he and I had first started seeing each other I, I was up front I was like listen I'm a music major I don't know where my career is going to take me I would like to see touring my future you know so I don't know how you feel about that and so his, his first his initial answer was well let's try right mm -hmm. well that conversation actually was the reason why he wanted to break up so here we are, fast forward years later, I moved from East Texas to Dallas. I'm in this band rehearsal, and I get a phone call. And who was it but him? Mm. And my first thought was, oh yeah, okay, so you find it you know, appropriate to call and check up on me now, you know, years later. No, no, I'm good now. I licked my wounds, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, the heartbreak is over. We're not doing this again, you know? <laughs> so I sat there and stood for a second, and I was like, it's gonna be a song, period. And so here we are. I literally wrote, literally, those lyrics were what I was feeling in that moment. And I've never been more honest um, in writing a song. I've never been more clear about what I wanted to say in it. Um, yeah, that was a, a sincere moment that actually went to a, you know, got, got set to, a, to music. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, true story. <laughs> true love story. True love story. <laughs> So it's actually pretty simple. Um, it's three chords, basically. Um, it's four. My bad. Okay, it's four chords. So it's um, one five, one five, one five four. Matt, may have you know it? I sent you the. You, you know it. <laughs>
a good song. Oh my god. Thank you so much. Ah, yes, and Cleon Edwards on drums. I've been knowing Cleon Edwards since he was 14 years old. Like, this is one of my best friends. This is the, he is the blueprint for my son's drumming. Like, my son, it was, when I would go pick my son up when he was four, four years old, he, hey, daddy, how you doing, daddy? Where's Cleon? <laughs> that would be the very next question. And I'd be like, uh, hey, give me a hug. You just said hi, and then immediately went to Cleon. But that's how much he loves him, and that's how close we are. Cleon Edwards has played for Erica Badu, Jill Scott, I mean, Snarky Puppy. He's played with all these big acts. And he, I remember him doing a Snarky Puppy gig. He, like, had two days to learn all the music. Went out there and smacked, and it's, it's video proof of it on YouTube. You can go look it up. You know, but I picked Bro just because he's played with Bobby a lot. That jail of when, you know, me me and him, we always think alike on a lot of things musically. So I knew I wouldn't have to really, really, I, I, anybody in the room that day, nobody really needed a lot of instruction. You know, they just get it. So and with Cleon, Cleon is just, he's one of the greatest drummers in the world. Bobby Sparks. Bobby Sparks is... A living legend here in Dallas, Texas. He's played for Tower of Power, Layla Hathaway, Marcus Miller, you name it. He's he's played for some of the top acts across the world. And he's right here in our city. And for him to be accessible, we call him, I call him Uncle Bobby a lot of times. Because, like, he, a lot of the keyboard players, and myself included, are, like, mimicking a lot of the things that he does. Because, you know, we'll go see him perform and, you know, we sometimes when you see somebody that you look up to, you kind of pattern yourself after them. You know, our, our heroes are uh, getting older. I'm, shoot, I'm getting older. I'm 41. So, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's aging. Everybody's getting older. You know, our health isn't what it always should be because we've continuously been up at night, late playing for everybody, traveling, getting on planes, jet lag just all around the world. So, you know, when you can actually have somebody of that stature be a part of something you're doing, and, you know, you, we got to give people their flowers while they're here, you know. Dealing with that mm -hmm. sense of what can I do That's why I put on. Yeah, no, I knew, I knew what was going on in your brain. I was like math programming. Because I already know you're going to think that, and you're going to. Oh, man. Guys, this was so much fun. Lala J, Sydney Cope. Thank you so much. <laughs> Everybody, thanks so much for joining us for the brand new Jam Sessions at Poppy's Place from Dallas Music Network. We're so glad that you're here. Um, we hope that you stick around for more music. Stay tuned, watch our channels, because more is coming to you. We want to thank our incredible band, Bobby Sparks on Oregon and Clown. We want to thank Matt Tracks on Rhodes, Cam and Lee on guitar, Tim Ramsey on bass, Cleon Edwards on drums. What an our camera crew and we especially want to thank you at home for watching thanks for helping us keep music alive make sure you check out all of these amazing artists and we can't just wait to see you next time here at Fabby's Place
fun. Encore. <laughs> that was fun. All okay. right. For the love that you gave and the care that you've lent I want you to know it was time well spent It's made me so much better and I know that it's true I wouldn't be me if it wasn't for you If not for you, I'd have never danced in the rain Found love or tried to tame the whispering winds of the edge wood of your care I have lived and I have dared to be the kind of man that you'd be proud of oh it's true I wouldn't be me if it wasn't for you And I know at times that I have let you down Wouldn't see the wrong I done, couldn't listen anyhow Well, your love for me is tried and it's true I wouldn't be me if it wasn't for you If not for you, I'd have never danced in the rain Found love or tried to tame the whispering winds of the Edgewood because of your care I have lived and I have dared to Be the kind of man that you'd be proud of Oh, it's true I wouldn't be me if it wasn't for you you gave and the care that you've lent I want you to know it was time well spent